Hey everybody, I just wanted to come on here and record a butterfly video for you guys because I love adding butterflies to my photos and it's super easy and I see a lot of people doing it recently and which I love and I just wanted to give you guys some tips on doing so. Um, there's just some things that you can do to make it look a little bit more realistic like this is one of Brindley another one of Brindley I didn't edit all of them but anyway I have some tips to help you guys in placing these butterflies and making sure they look good so anytime I add uh, my butterflies I make sure that it's one of the first things that I do because I want my actions to go on top of the butterfly and because a lot of my actions are light or overlays and I want my the light on my butterflies to reflect that light so that your brain thinks it's real. So my butterflies I'm going to add to this image of Brindley are from Etsy and I will link that. Um, this image, uh, my girls are usually looking down at their dress when I'm having them move and so... I love that and it's just a great image to add butterflies to. Um, the direction that they're looking, like it looks like to me she's looking at a butterfly. So I'm going to put, position this overlay. Now this overlay has a bunch of butterflies on it. There are other overlays that you can get that have individual butterflies, which is fine if you'd rather do that. I'm not taking time to do that and I like the ones with a bunch of them and then I like to get rid of the ones that I don't like. So I'm gonna move this around and I'm gonna position this to where it looks like she's looking at this little butterfly that maybe is landing on this bow. So I love this butterfly, but then there's a couple of other, uh, other ones that I don't really want in the image so I'm gonna hit okay I'm going to so my new layer on the butterflies is 22 copies so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into um, a layer mat add a layer mask on that and what that does if you aren't familiar with working with layer masks I suggest you go back to some of my editing videos I cover that a lot um, layer masks are life-changing and they allow you to manipulate the layer that I have here so when I add a layer mask, what it's telling Photoshop is, is I want to manipulate this layer. So my current layer is white. So then anything I want to remove from the layer, I'm going to do with a black brush. So I'm going to get my brush, make sure it's black over here. And then I can make that larger and smaller with my bracket keys. And I'm going to get rid of this butterfly that's kind of by her face. I don't mind this. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of this one, I think. So this is going to be very basic butterfly adding to an image on this one. So, I mean, I think that looks good. One, the, one of the most important things that you can do when adding butterflies to your image is to manipulate the blur on the butterflies. As you can see, I'm going to zoom in. You can see that some of these, I mean, whoever, it's an Etsy maker, but the butterflies that are further away are naturally going to be blurry, more blurry, and then the ones that are closer are going to be more in focus. But you can see that this is extremely crisp in comparison to her gown. And in reality, if these butterflies were flying around, you're not going to be catching their them perfectly. Like, that's just probably not going to happen. So what we're going to do is make sure that I click on the actual butterfly layer, not the layer mask, because I'm telling Photoshop what I'm wanting to manipulate. So if I choose my layer mask, then I'm going to be applying blur to the layer mask. That's not what we want to do. We want to click the actual butterflies. Then you're going to go to filter. You're going to go down to blur, and then you're going to go to motion blur. Now what that's going to do is it's just going to kind of... Um, apply a blur as if it were moving. So it's kind of like a side to side blur and see that already looks better. I am way down low, like I'm only at seven. So 
start there. It's I always pull it over and then start kind of adding until it looks right in my brain. This looks good to my brain. She's moving, the butterflies are moving, this looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Sometimes if I need them to be a little bit more blurry, I will go ahead and go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And then you can add a little bit more blur there. And you can add, see, I mean, you can even see a difference in the lines of the butterflies. So I might go ahead and actually keep that on there. So I'm only at 1.3 on that Gaussian Blur. So I'm gonna take it off and on so that you guys can see the difference. Now the motion blur is the most distinct difference. Now in my video, maybe you can't tell, but you can usually tell whenever I get it all edited. So there's that. And then you're just gonna go ahead and flatten your image. Now I would go ahead and go through and edit this out um, and finish it with all of my actions. And I can just go ahead and do that super fast. This is a um, a fast edit. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I am going to go ahead and add portraiture to this. Sometimes this will blur the butterflies too and that's okay if they're similar to the skin tone and color. You can see it didn't do that though from the layer mask. And this is just a quick edit. Like I would normally go in there and edit that hair. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go down here and add my standard, which is Campbell's soup. Looks good. I'm going to flatten. And then I'm pretty sure on this one, then I went and added my center stage from my Jessica Drossen Illuminations Instant Overlays Volume 2. This will all be linked in the description of the video for you to go get if you like. Um, I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. I'm gonna take this off of her face just a smidge. Yeah. And I'm thinking I'm gonna pull up the other ones as reference to make sure that that looks pretty similar. So then it looks like I probably added Flashlight Cool also in the Jessica Drossen Eliminations Instant Overlays Volume 2. I usually use about the same Photoshop actions on most of them. Yep, that looks about right. Yep. Yep. So there's that and done. And then I'm going to pop... Um, if you've watched me edit from the beginning, I bring the highlights down so that I can then manipulate them in Photoshop. So I bump the highlights just a little bit and there you go. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead. Oops, wrong one. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then we are going to move on to another image where I'm going to show you how to manipulate the color of the butterflies to match your background. So I am back with a new image of Alice. Now we're going to do it in reverse. Now generally when I add the butterflies, I add them at first. So let's say that you watch this tutorial and you already have edited images that you'd like to add butterflies to. We're going to do it that way. So let's pretend like we have are, well, we're not pretending. I already edited this image. And then I'm going to add the butterflies in after the effect, after the fact. So we have light kind of coming down from this way. So I'm going to show you guys not only how to manipulate the color of butterflies to match your image, but I'm also going to be showing you how to add flare to the butterflies after you have like a light flare to your image. So I'm going to be using this time. The butterflies are from Samarana and uh, Samarana, Samarana, I don't know which it is, but Anyway, these are good butterflies. So the butterflies, so it looks like, once again, she's, and actually, you know what, it's funny, it happened to be the same gown that I edited with Brin, or Brinley. So um, this gown's really versatile and I sold it and I'm really sad about it and I wish I had it in every color. Anyway, um, I'm going to just pull in this butterfly right here that I found that I like what it's doing. Does it match? No. But guess what? I'm going to show you how to change that. So... What I want to do is, you can see her eyes are kind of coming down here. 
So what I want to do is I want to kind of add the butterflies like that. You can also add more butterflies if you want, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that because she could be looking at this one. She could be looking at this one. Now, as you can see, her gown is very, now her gown's blurry because I was like right up to her and this part of the gown was really close to me. And so it was blurry and that's okay because I like that. Okay. But we're going to fix that. So first what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the color. Okay. Obvi orange butterflies is not going to go with this image, which is fine. So all you do is you're going to click your layer with your butterflies. Let's say you just don't have the budget to go buy all the colors of butterflies. Fine. We're going to do what we can with this. Let's just say we only own one oh, butterfly overlay. I'm going to show you how to uh, mess with it. Okay. So make sure your butterfly, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do um, a layer mask like I did before and make sure my brush is black and I'm going to get rid of this guy right here. Oops. I did not. I changed my brush brush opacity and the rest of them I'm fine with, um, except for that one. I just didn't like the way that one looked. Um, so I got rid of it. Okay. So now I am going to click on my butterflies, not my layer mask. And then I'm going to go up into adjustments and then I'm going to choose hue saturation. So what that's going to do is this new layer is going to allow me to manipulate the color of the butterflies. So when I click hue saturation, what it does is it automatically makes a new layer above it, which is an adjustment layer, which means I'm going to adjust what's under here. Okay. This is going to pull up to, this is going to be where you're going to adjust it. Okay. I don't want to adjust. I'm going to show you what happens if I don't do what I'm going to. Okay. Do you see? I'm, uh, it's adjusting the whole image and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this layer. Basically, I'm going to tell Photoshop, Photoshop, I only want to adjust hue and saturation to this layer under here. So what I'm going to do is make sure it's chosen the hue saturation layer. And then I'm going to hit option command G. As you can see, it moved it over just a little bit in there, but it also has this little arrow. This little arrow indicates to you that it's a kind of over and then down that this layer is only adjusting this layer underneath it. Okay. So I've clipped it to the layer below it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and watch now when I mess with it, it's only adjusting the butterfly layer. Okay. So my saturation, you know what that is, right? It adjusts your color. So above that is the hue. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different colors on the strip. So it's, there's orange, there's yellow, there's green, there's blue. So right now it's in the middle. So as you can see, when I move it, it's adding and adjusting this color. So I kind of want them kind of like a purple. Okay. I know that that is like Lisa Frank purple, but then I'm going to go down back into saturation. Let's see what happens when I pull it all the way over. And then I'm just going to add color until it kind of goes with the background, right? Then I'm going to choose my butterflies and I'm going to bring them down just a smidge. And look, so pretty. They match perfectly, right? Then we're going to do our little tricky do that we did earlier. And I'm going to go down to filter. I'm going to go down to blur and then I'm going to add some motion blur to them, right? I like that. So I'm going to hit OK. So then what I'm going to do is I love the way this looks, right? Then before you flatten it, you're going to add your flare. I'm also going to go back in and blur these butterflies a little bit, but not until I add my flare. So I'm going to go back into my actions and I know that for this image, I probably use center stage, which is a center flare overlay. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to add this to the whole image, which is fine. Okay. That's kind of pretty, but I only want it to go into the butterflies. So I'm going to do exactly what I did here. Okay. And I'm going to do actually, you know what you can do? I can actually combine, oops, sorry. I can actually combine these two layers by merging them. So then I can go to layer. 
and then merge layers. Okay, so then I merge those two layers. Those are the butterflies and the hue saturation layer. Then I'm gonna take center stage and I'm gonna do my little option command G move again. Okay, what that's doing, can you see? So what it does, this is gonna darken this, but then it's gonna add a little bit of a flare to the top of this, okay? Which is good because this butterfly is technically under here, so it would be shaded a little bit, so that's fine. If that's not enough, I, you can add an actual flare to them too. So I'm gonna pull up my little flare which is I keep everything in here and then I name it. So I didn't mean to do that. Let it come up. Yay, there's the flare. Okay, so this is my favorite flare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it huge. And it doesn't matter. It's going to kind of come from the left. And I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter where it's at. So I'm since it has a black layer, I'm going to add screen to it, okay? But then I'm going to add a blur. And I'm going to blur it out major, like major. Okay? Then, la 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 la, taking forever. Then I'm going to bring the opacity down until it kind of matches my image, okay? Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Option Command G and I'm going to clip it. And as you can see, it adds a flare to these butterflies. We're going to bring it down just a little bit. Okay. Then, not only that, this one's not going to have a flare probably, okay, because it's underneath her skirt. So then I can turn it into a layer, I can add a layer mask on top of it, and then I can take that flare away from this one. And I might take it away from this one because it wouldn't really flare those. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that image. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the blur on this butterflies and this butterfly, these two butterflies and this butterfly because they need to be a little bit more blurry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Command J and I'm gonna duplicate my image and then I'm going to add a Gaussian blur, Whee! not that much, where it matches the blur of her skirt kind of. Now they're not exactly with it, but they're kind of like in the same plane of focus. Okay, then I'm going to add a layer mask and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to command I because that's going to invert it. So what that means is it's not, it takes it from making the whole image blurred to me being able to apply the blur. So now my layer mask is black. So when I want to add to it, my layer mask needs to be white. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blur to these and then I can go ahead and pull them down. See? Now they have a similar blur to what this is. And then even if I wanted to blur this guy a little bit, I could even do that. See? Now they just kind of go right into the image and they look like they've always been there. So now the first image we did, we took it from beginning to end. Now this one we added the butterflies after, but then kind of did some tips and tricks to kind of like mesh it into the image. So. The other one I did in the same series was this one. And I did exactly the same thing with these butterflies as I did with the other one. I um, changed the, manipulated the color of these butterflies to the other ones. And then I think I even like took another color and added um, another layer over it and just sort of like painted it in um, to kind of, you know, look like it was with the image and then I wanted it to kind of look like the butterflies were kind of lifting up the skirt and then I added the one that looked like she was holding it because she was actually holding her hair here, but I was like, oh, it looks like she's holding a butterfly. So I added that. So here's this one, which I do like these other butterflies a little bit better. They kind of have a silver glow to them, but I like these two. It's all good. I thought it would be fun to add some butterflies to this one after the fact um, and make it look a little bit more 
fantastical and not so trying trying to make like keep in the look of the image but then it can be a little bit more fantasy like so I'm thinking let's add, we might like go overboard with the butterflies just for funsies um let's get rid okay so I'm gonna try a couple of things here with you guys <laughs> um obvi we don't want these in her face but I don't mind one like on the flowers now that I'm seeing this would be kind of cool um okay so what I'm gonna do is I might move yeah I like that okay so I like that this is kind of at this part of it this one I might get rid of okay I'm gonna add a layer mask on this so that I can um, use my opposite color brush to remove some of these butterflies I'm gonna get rid of this one and these on her face I don't really like that one it looks kind of raggedy so I'm not gonna sorry butterfly um I'm good with these and then there's another yellow set I don't know let's add these and see what happens I'm out that's uh, too orange. I don't, I, don't, I don't like those anyway. So then I think I'm going to add this yellow set. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, but I am going to have to remove some of these. Okay, so let's see how I want to position this. Obviously, if I want this guy on the bottom to stay, that needs it could come down just a little bit. I'm not sure about this big guy. He's kind of distracting. Anything that competes with a subject's face, I'm going to get rid of. Um, so I'm going to add a layer mask, and I'm going to remove this big one right here. I'm, I don't like these two. I like this one better than this one, so I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm fine with this one right here. I don't like these two competing with that one. So sometimes I like to get back a little bit. I don't want him there. I don't want anything around her face. And I'm actually okay with the rest of those. Yeah, that's kind of fun, right? Okay. And I'm good with the color tones in it. I do think I'm going to add that flare and you know that flare is from some Etsy pack um, I'll see if I can figure out which one it's a great flare and you know and I feel like when people use flare like an overlay flare overlay I feel like it really makes a difference whenever you add that blur that Gaussian blur layer um, I think a lot of people just don't think about it um, adding a little bit of blur to the flare but it really makes a difference I think and now that I'm looking I think I'm gonna get rid of this guy yeah I think that looks good that looks good okay so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and blur this and I'm gonna add a little bit more than normal and don't forget to add it to the other butterfly layer. I could have combined them, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to um, get rid of my control over each individual layer quite yet. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of Gaussian Blur to these guys. Yeah, that looks good. Then I'm going to go back to this one down here. I'm going to add my blur. Really, I'm really looking at this guy. Because I haven't adjusted my opacity yet. And I always adjust my opacity on the butterflies. Because like I said, I don't want them to compete with her face. I just want them to add to the image. Yeah, that looks good. And it just adds a little bit in there. I don't think any of them are too distracting. I was going to add that flare, and then my computer started being slow. Let's go ahead. You know what? Just for kicks and giggles. Let's see what happens. I know that this is sort of like two years ago, but 
Let's see. Let's do, let's put that flare kind of by that one butterfly and see what happens. If we don't like this, we'll just rotate it. Okay, so I'm going to add, I'm going to show you the magic. See, it just kind of adds like a glow when you add that Gaussian blur. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it back. I know we're supposed to be doing butterflies right now, but why not, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this into that hole where that light flare is and see what happens. Oh, that's fun. I'm going to actually mask it off of her face a little bit, though. And it's a little much on her face. But I don't want to completely get rid of it around her hair because it would be a little bit flared on her hair. That is so cool. I really like that. I think that's fun. It's very, um, ooh, I like it. I'm just going to leave it like that, actually. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. And um, usually I will say when I do like crazy stuff like this, I mean, I have the original, which we'll go back to the original, which is beautiful, right? But then this is just sort of fun. And so I'll always give if I'm, um, uh, I'm doing digitals right now. And so I would offer this as an upsell maybe. I already did it. And I mean, it's going to be pretty for me to post. So I'm getting something out of it. But then I would upsell this to the client as an art piece. And then if I were doing IPS, I would definitely show this um, IPS because it would be pretty impactful to show large like on my TV screen. So there's your before and there's your after. So like I said, I'm going to save this. Start from scratch on the next one, but I lied because I remembered that so, oh gosh, it's been a year probably that I did the photo series or the video series of the um, tips on photographing field backdrops and they've come back in style again this year and so you can always go back and watch those. Um, I also did a couple of videos on how to make overlays and how to make your own overlays from your images and I'm going to do that really quick because um, I, that's become popular again like people are selling overlays and so I'm going to show you some tips on doing that and then adding the butterflies into it as well. So, okay, so I already have this image of Hillary edited. And now as this, this isn't, this isn't like a realistic field, but we're going to do the exact same thing that we would do if it was a realistic field. So as you can see along the bottom are these beautiful flowers. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these flowers to make overlays. And if you haven't watched my other video, go back and watch that because it shows you how to do this also, um, which is super helpful. Okay, so we're going to go to our quick selection tool. We're going to go to the one on the left without the plus or minus. And then you're just going to kind of sort of crudely select these flowers. And then we might go ahead and do that one. And then when you want to take something away, just choose the minus, the brush with the minus. Um, I might add this little guy right here. And then I'm going to take away some of that grass. And then I'm gonna take away some of the grass right here. I don't even know if we'll use that, but that's okay. So once you're happy with what you have selected, I might take away that. You're going to do Command J. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna copy what you've selected, your new selection onto a new layer. You're gonna to go to your arrow and then see. Now this is your selection of the background. Looks pretty crude, right? So what, if let's pretend like you're shooting in a field, okay? If you're shooting in a field and there are flowers in the foreground, which is the area between you and your subject, then those flowers are gonna be much larger, right? You're closer to them. So anything you're closer to is gonna be bigger. Anything you're further away is gonna be smaller. 
hold your shift key, you're going to make it bigger. Okay. So that would be about right. Right. Then you're going to hit. Yes. I like that there. Then you're going to make sure that's selected. You're going to go to filter. You're going to go to blur. You're going to go to Gaussian blur. Okay. That's actually pretty good. So that looks like it's at about 53. As you can see, you go bigger. It's just going to be blurrier. Smaller is going to be not that blurry. Now, what I always look for is the edges because you can see the edge is kind of crude. So I look until it does what I think is a pretty good job of blurring those edges, which seems to be about the 50 to 60 range for me. So then as we know, when we shoot through things in our foreground, they are not solid. So you're gonna take your opacity and you're just gonna kind of come up until it looks like what foreground, foreground flowers would look like. Then you're going to either do your flare overlay over this or you can do you know, an action with a flare over it. Now this is just an overlay that I usually use Okay, now the bottom for me is darker. Okay, what you can do with an overlay is I can choose it. I can go out. What I'm choosing is what it's showing you in the square. So if I pull this down and make it wider. Now I'm not, I'm going to clip this to this. Okay, so as you can see, that kind of makes it lighter on top as if the sun were coming from behind and lighting these foreground flowers up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this. I'm going to hit option command G and I'm going to clip this overlay to this flower layer. See, see how, okay, not only so because this down here is darker. Okay. Because my actions are going to make this darker kind of like a vignette. Okay. When I, add it, it not only is mimicking the warmth in this, which is tying it all together, but it's also giving it that pretty light on the top of it, okay? So at this point, before you flatten it, is when you're going to want to pull your butterflies in, all right? But I'm going to go ahead and do this side over here. So there are two things you can do. You can either start over and you can go ahead and you do this, which is fine. I can select this over here. Sorry if you can hear my puppy. Okay. Then we're going to Command J again. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy it onto another layer. We're going to make it big. You can always rotate it a little bit too. I want a little bit of that blue in there. Okay. It's going to be a little bit darker. Now we're going to go to Filter. And technically, if the last thing you did, if you want to mimic that, you can go right here and this is going to give you what the last filter you applied was. And I can just go ahead and apply that. Okay. And then it automatically does it. Then I'm going to bring it in to mimic about the left side. Okay. Then I can copy this layer so I can command J and I'm going to pull this layer down over this floral layer. And then I'm going to option command G and clip it to that other layer. See, pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, while this is done, I'm going to bring in my butterflies. Okay. I'm not sure what butterflies I'm going to use. I think I'm just going to, let's see if I have any pretty, I don't like the, wait. Does this one have, no. Some of them will have the full image butterflies at the bottom of them, and these don't. Mm, I might do the white ones. You know, the white ones are just so good. They never fail. Look how pretty, okay? So we now are going to decide, this looks so good. We are going to decide whether we want these butterflies to be behind the flowers or in front of the flowers. Okay. So if we put these behind the flowers, see this one kind of goes behind it. Looks good, right? Or it can go in front. 
I'm kind of digging it behind it, honestly, because once I add my blur to it, so there's my motion blur. So I've added my motion blur. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur, not as much as the we did to the flowers, but just a little bit. Then I'm going to take my butterfly opacity down just a smidge. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my layer mask. And I'm going to get rid at 100%, sorry, not 29%. I'm going to get rid of these butterflies. I don't mind that. So pretty. So pretty. And like I said, you can always pull it above if you want that butterfly looking like it's going to land on or like looking like the butterfly then is between you and the foreground flowers. So pretty. So pretty. Then if I even want to go another step and add my light flare to my butterflies, I can do that by copying this layer, bringing this layer above the butterflies, and then as that overlay is chosen, I'm going to pull it up. Okay, then I'm going to then mask it to this butterfly layer. So then I'm going to choose Option Command G, and it's going to clip it right to that so that it matches what I've done to the image. So pretty. And now it just all looks like it was originally done with the image. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And you can do this with any of your realistic um, backgrounds. I mean, how long did it take me to make these overlays myself? Like five seconds. You can buy floral overlays um, or you can just do what I did and make them yourself from the background that you already bought. So I hope these tips helped. Um, I'm going to show you guys some realistic um, background ones that I did last year with butterflies real quick. Okay, so now that we have edited several different pictures and I've showed you guys a ton of tips on editing them, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some tips on shooting them. And there are several images in this that actually have shooting videos with them and I'll let you know whenever we get to those. So I'm just going to show you guys some pictures. So this is Scout and sometimes if the girls are good little actresses, I will have them. I will know that like I want to put, you know, butterflies in the scene and I see that the scene kind of calls for it. And so I'll say, oh my goodness, Scout, you know, do a twirl and look up like, oh my goodness, there's butterflies. And she's a great little actress. So she gets into it. And so this was one of those where I told her to twirl and look up like there's butterflies and voila, there was. Um, this dress, I knew there were a ton of butterflies within the gown. And so I knew that my main theme was going to be butterflies. And so um, I had Kate, I said, Kate, you know, she's actually an like does theater and so she knows you know how to act and everything and so I said hey Kate listen here and I you know usually if you guys they want to collaborate with you um your little clients and they get really excited when they get to play pretend and kind of like help you out and so I just said okay here's the deal like this dress look down at this dress it's beautiful it has all these butterflies on it um I'm gonna put butterflies like in photoshop in the picture so I want you to like hold the dress like your hat and put your arm up like you're holding um the butterfly and she did and it was beautiful um I I I added this picture in here just to show you guys that there are other options besides butterflies. Um, there were dragonflies on this gown. And so I, you know, found an overlay for dragonflies. And I mean, it's literally exactly the same as doing the butterflies. So that was just something I want to show you guys. This has an actual shooting video from last year. It's the, um, the, um, outdoor backdrops, the, um, field backdrops and you can actually watch a shoot this um photo and what happened was you can see here she actually had flowers in her hands and she drops the flowers when she twirls and it just the way her hands were positioned it looked like she was like holding a butterfly so I just stuck one on there and then some in the background and you can actually watch me shoot and edit this in one of my previous videos 
that's from last year um this was a little cameron and um this was a really pretty little setup here um this dress was a carriage house dress i shot and she was just kind of like twirling and looking over and i thought oh my gosh and some images you know you just need butterflies and so they're like doing something like this where she was looking down and i'm like oh my gosh it looks like she's like holding the, the her dress away from the butterflies excuse me and i don't know it was just kind of perfect and this is another watch me shoot and um i did a watch me shoot with this and presley and her little brother and sometimes i'll tell them to like look towards the light or look out the window and you know I positioned the butterflies like I did earlier where um, they look like they're looking at them. So that was a pretty one. You can watch me. Actually, you can watch me shop for these flowers. You can watch me set the flowers up. You can watch me set the backdrop up and you can watch me actually shoot this one. Um, this was super um, pretty and these butterflies, you know, she was looking over to the side and sometimes I'll have them come up from the background and then walk forward and look from side to side. And this was just one of those that just needed some butterflies. Um, this is also, I don't think there's a watch me shoot, but there is about how I do these flower blocks um, where I put the um, flowers, stick the stems in the flower blocks to use in the session. And there's a whole video on that. And then I show like using the overlays and everything. And this is a good little um, video to watch how to do that. And I don't even, I think her mom said something and then she's like, oh, and I just needed a, some butterflies. So I love this image. It's one of my favorites. And then this is Charlie. And I told, she's a good little actress too. I work with her quite a bit. And so I told her what to do and it worked out well, which also was this one. And it was a beautiful um, set that her mom actually hung together. So it was so pretty. And then this is just the one that we did earlier um with Hillary and I showed you guys how to do that and then you can also don't forget about putting them um uh laying down um Kate this was another image of Kate and this this dress was just so pretty I just felt like it needed monarchs and so I put some in there and then um one thing that we didn't I should have done this to show you guys too when they're laying down and you're looking above there would be shadow behind the butterflies. And so all I do is I take, where's it at? Where's my hand tool? Where is it? Here we go. Okay, so you go and take your burn tool and then you just burn the shadow and think about the light coming this way. So the shadow is gonna be to the right and down here and down here and over here. And I just um, used my burn tool and just burned in shadows behind these butterflies um, so that it looked like they had landed on Kate on her inner hands and on her hands and her dress. And it really just makes it believable within the image and your eyes, you know, believe it more. So um, just think about those little things whenever you're doing these. And, you know, don't forget about those laying down shots with the butterflies. They're beautiful. So. Um, I will link everything below. If you ever have any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'm going to put my Facebook group information um, at the a link at the bottom too. And if you are a photographer that does not teach also, you are welcome to come and join me there. I shoot live sometimes and I share things in that group and any sort of... Um, tutorials or anything that are going to be released in the future um, you'll find out about them there first and so um, if you would like to join me and like I said you're not a photographer that teaches um, come on over I would love to have you so again if you have any questions let me know and I hope that that helped you guys out so thank you so much and we'll see you next time